Hi guys, in this video, we're gonna be printing and painting this lighthouse, hopefully. Gruffy Crow. Okay, so um, I bought a boat and, and then I went absolutely mental with these docks on my 3D printer. Absolutely shooting them out, love them to bits. Definitely need to paint them. But I was looking at my docks here uh, and admiring them and realized I needed a lighthouse. Now I have been using the Sunlu cheap resin uh, that I did a whole video on uh, to produce all of these and it's been working fantastically. But what I have been doing is neglecting this bottle of regular Elegoo that I've just had uh, near my printer for a little while now. I know these things have a bit of a spirey date on them. So I have given up on the Sunlu for a little bit and I'm gonna use this up on something nice and chunky. Uh, something like this would normally probably be better off printed in uh, on a sort of plastic printer, um, like a, a, a layered printer. I don't know what the, the correct term would be. But that's not what we've got. Uh, I have found that I can fit the largest part here uh, perfectly into one layer, uh, but there are six layers. And I think they're more or less gonna have to be printed individually. So let's go, uh, let's fire the printer up and we'll have a look at the first layer. Okay, here's the first part, fresh off the printer. Uh, just come out of my wash, so it's still kind of wet. Looking pretty nice. Uh, didn't take long to remove all the uh, supports. And uh, there's still a few tiny little ones around and some that are just jammed in. There were quite a lot of supports. Uh, I had it orientated with the door up on the bed. So with these two sides downwards, which means that those two sides are the most affected, but still not too bad. I think that'll be fairly easy to clean up. I think probably what I'll do is I'll just take a knife over these stones and just remove anything like that. And I think that's only gonna take me a few seconds. This is a much more sort of, um, sort of brittle resin than the one I've been using recently. Um, but for this purpose, I think it's gonna be fine. My only worry now would be as if this piece warps. I printed this one straight up. The next one I've printed at a slight angle. Let's see if I can uh, slightly reduce the number of supports, but actually this looks fine. Um, so we'll see how the slightly angled one goes. So we've got stages two and three all printed. Looking pretty good. Uh, these were orientated slightly more at an angle and I don't think it's made the slightest bit of difference. So in the future I'll just do it whichever way is the fastest print. I don't think we've gained Oh, am I saying that? No, no, beating out the angle seems to have worked. It's a lot less clear up on these sides, so actually I'll take that instantly back. Printing out the slight angle, definitely worthwhile. Wouldn't have worked with this one because it was too tall. So you'll see in here, so I've stripped off most of the supports, and I'll show you in a second what they look like fresh off the printer. You can see in between these gaps here, there's still supports. Uh, but they should be easy as taking a little scribing tool here and just running that down the gaps. And all the layers continue to have plenty of room for uh, characters in them. Sort of the right height and sort of look out the windows and everything. Okay, so this is what the parts look like fresh off the printer. Uh, this has just had a quick rinse. And I'm just gonna pop it off. I've ran some gloves on just to be careful because uh, this will be covered in slightly uncured resin and uh, alcohol, which will dry your skin out some rotten even though I don't particularly react to it at all. And I'm just breaking these away pretty roughly. Now these snap very differently to the ones uh, I'm used to. Very crunchy. And there probably are more delicate ways to get these off that would even leave even less marks. But there, I mean, there's not really any noticeable damage. And it's a lot easier to do this, and it's a lot cleaner to do this uh, before the cure. But one thing I'm noticing about this piece is it's a lot smaller than the last few. So I've popped that back in the wash uh, for a couple of minutes, and then it'll take a couple of minutes in the curing machine. One problem I'm gonna have while I'm resetting the uh, printer for the next part is that I don't actually have enough resin to put the whole thing back to maximum. Uh, so this is all the resin that I have left out of that bottle. 
It's currently upside down so we can get the last drips out of it. Uh, but thankfully the two pieces we've got left to go are the, some of the smallest. So hopefully we can get by with almost that full tank. Okay, all the remaining pieces have been finished printing. So we've got this one, we've got the top, and then we have the final part. Uh, so this, I did run out of resin while I was printing this, as you can see. So this whole thing um, was basically a whole litre of resin. Between the construction itself and the supports, uh, that's what a whole bottle of resin looks like printed in one piece basically but I did spot it just as it was running out uh, and I threw a bit of the regular sun new grey in uh, this hasn't popped apart or anything with it being made of two different resins as it cured so that's good it'd be interesting to see if you can tell where the line is uh, once it's been uh, sprayed that'll be interesting uh, there are a few faults with it obviously messed up the supports quite badly when it um, printed but it did recover and you can see here down this line that we did actually start to run out of resin completely on this corner. Um, but thankfully, and due to the way it's printed, that's all inside. And thankfully, because of the, the bit I changed uh, and everything else, this still fits absolutely perfectly on the top. Now, I was talking about magnets before. I'm still somewhat tempted, but this fits together so nicely. There's really not much. It's, just a, obviously you can't pick it up by the top but I think it'd be too heavy to pick up by anything but the sort of second to bottom section maybe anyway even if we had some really strong magnets and these sort of notches actually fit really satisfyingly well obviously I'm kind of still tempted to do the whole thing together but as I said this kind of works for packing it away and just sort of being able to sort of lift parts off potentially you've even got a modular smaller tower there uh, even if there's obviously no obvious way in on that version. So I think we're probably, as far as connectivity go, going to leave it as it is. But we are going to make some more modifications to this uh, before we get to paint. Uh, the two thing, main things we're going to look at is because of the docks that I want this to sort of be part of. Um, I'm actually going to lift the whole thing up by another uh, couple of centimetres. And we're going to build a little sort of stone uh, wall for it to sit on. Uh, so it's raised up and we're gonna put a light in it, I think. So I made this recently to put a crane on, uh, the idea being it could look quite good to sort of sat in the water. And we've got these stone walls. So this is the sort of thing that I'm gonna go for. And then that'll mean that we can have sort of wooden jetties leading up to the front door. Uh, and that'll look quite good, I think. These have been the jetties, the basic form of the jetties that I've been using. So to achieve that, uh, these are the bricks that I'll be using. These are made using her starts molds out of like a quite a tough dental plaster. Uh, they've got a nice hollow sound to them. So I guess first things first is how big do I want this platform to be? I want a good portion of this to be sat on uh, the sort of central earth patch rather than on the stone walls directly possibly. So two of these long parts are 15. So I think that'll give me what I'm kind of after. Uh, that'll give me a nice big structure if we can make it 15 all the way around. We're sticking this together with this general purpose wood glue, which I find a little bit tougher than regular PVA. And on the board I've got here, I've got my lines marked out uh, around the outside and I've put a bevel on it. So I know I've got the lines to keep to. I'm making all of the bottom layer out of all the sort of pig with pig the thrown together pieces uh, and that means that when I make the top layer I can use all the nice bits and we've got these nice cobbles at the top to look at. Okay so that is the base all completed for now. I'm going to let all this wood glue dry. As you can see I've added some little uh, baffles in there. That means that they're just set a little bit lower than the walls so when I uh, finish a new cut a new square for in there I should just be able to drop that in, glue it around the edges and on top of these and that'll give it plenty of support I think. I don't think we'll have any problems with bowing or anything like that. Okay so everything has dried and I've been playing with a few bits and pieces. Let's take this out of the way. This is all glued down and I've been looking at some extras to add to the base here to make that a bit more exciting. So we've got some uh, sort of chests, uh, 
these are nice and hollow so they didn't use too much resin and I think we're going to do a stack of those uh, with like a storage barrel over here try and make them look kind of natural like they've been stacked up behind the lighthouse out of the way and then we've got a much bigger barrel here also hollow that I'm going to add in I think almost like it's their water store or something and on the front we've got these uh, lamp posts I think I'm going to add those either side. I quite like the way that looks. Uh, so you can just find the door to the lighthouse in the evenings. Okay, I've done some work on this final piece. Um, I did manage to drop it and splinter it, which was clever of me. That's repaired with minimal damage. Uh, what we have done is I have printed out this little brazier. So this is from the original kit, the... Uh, uh, the ruined lighthouse kit is one of the two options in there and I've drilled a hole not quite as centrally as I'd like but all the way through that and through the bottom and the reason why I've done this is to add some lighting uh, to the whole piece um, we're going to use one of these tea lights here so this is a sort of flickery tea light and if I turn the lights down here you can see that flickering away so inside this sort of gold case is just this little piece here. It's a very simple thing. It's not even got a real switch. It just presses this little metal bit in. So what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble this even further. So after taking the battery out, we've just got this bent wire here holding that in. And then the wires, the other side of the LED is just bent around there. So now we have the LED separate. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend out these legs with a piece of just some pieces of wire. I'll just quickly solder them on. And then once this is all painted, so we'll leave everything off until it's painted, which will obviously be the next job. But that LED will fit neatly just up into there. And what I'll do is I'll just put a touch of hot glue around there. And I think I'm happy with that. Doesn't need to be anything fancier. Okay, so I've started the paintwork on these. Uh, so the undercoat's got us here. Uh, this, the black was just filling all these gaps and the gray was just to make the coverage that bit easier. Then I've gone in with this Mechanicus Standard uh, and just got everything nice darkish coverage. I think that's as dark as we're gonna need to go. And just plastered that on all the stonework. I then gave that a fairly generous dry brush with this Dawnstone. Already we're starting to pick up a few details. And then to get to here, uh, we used the Celestia Grey. As you can see, I've used that on the base as well as on here. So I'm going to go around, I'm going to get it all to like this stage. I might even go in with a little bit of uh, pure white and give it the very uh, lightest dry brush with that uh, when it's all done. But potentially that's going to be good enough. Shouldn't take too long to do. I've been using this. Uh, sort of very chunky but very nice and stiff uh, makeup brush to get the base coats down and then this nice long flicky art brush for the dry brushes it was shooting through this pretty quickly once I've got all the stonework to look like that I'm then gonna go Rhinox hide on here just do my normal earth colors uh, and then we'll start picking out the wood in uh, another brown okay I'm still working on the painting but one thing that is done is the wires extended through and soldered onto the LED with a bit of tape as well and to hold it all together. So yeah we'll just use a dab of hot glue just to tuck that in there uh, nice and neatly and I think that is going to work quite well. Uh, and then we'll do another dab of hot glue and just attach this whole thing to the bottom here and uh, that will keep all the switch in place and everything um, but it also means we can change the battery if need be from the back here. Here's the lamp posts. Uh, just a dark metal and then giving them a black wash. I've done the yellow inside the glass first and then I'll wash it. I should give me some bit of shading and go over it again. Um, I'm not putting as much time and effort into all the individual parts as I would if it was a, a proper mini but I think enough um, that if you take a closer look it'll be all right. I think I'm happy with all the metal work now. Uh, there's some vines growing at the front of the building here. Uh, continues onto the other pieces as well. I'm just gonna do them in this really dark green and then wash it brown and I think that should be adequate. 
Excellent. While well, painting the vines on this part, I realised that I have managed at some point to completely smash the whole thing in half. Just those bottom floorboards holding this together. I'm just going to run a cocktail stick of super glue down these cracks and that should sort it out. I don't think we can blame it on the resin, by the way. I think I, I did drop it. So, my bad, probably. I think that is all the painting done now. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do down these sides. I'm probably going to leave it like this until I do some more terrain that I need to match up. Um, but yeah, the last bit we need to do is just uh, finish up these earth parts. So I'm going to do that the way I've finished a lot of stuff recently. Uh, we're just going to get some nice bushes and grass tufts and flowers. And then just finish up with a bit of this sort of light coloured grass. And that should make it look quite nice and fresh. So there's the tufts on. And there's all the grass on. And I'm quite happy with that. I've left some little bowl patches where, you know, people get to the crates and like to this barrel and stuff. Almost like a little trail. Try and make things look a bit real. Snug the deeper grass into the nooks and crannies and everything. Uh, last thing to do is see what this guy looks like on the tabletop. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.